Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or so ago, I did a video demonstrating how to best use Topaz Labs to Noise AI as a Lightroom plugin. In that video, I mentioned that in a week or so, I'll do a second video demonstrating how to best use to Noise AI as a Photoshop plugin. And later, I'll do a third video demonstrating how to best use it as a standalone application. I plan to do similar videos for Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Photo AI as well and have all of those videos available in a playlist. The playlist is called Topaz Labs 2023, and I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. The reason why I'm doing these videos is because I've been using these applications from the beginning, and I believe I've developed the best way to use these apps in these varying situations that maximize their effectiveness. Now, as you can see, I have Photoshop open, and I did mention that in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to best use Denoise AI as a Photoshop plugin. So let's open up an image into Photoshop. On my desktop, I have a RAW file. Now, this is unique to RAW files only. If you open up a RAW file into Photoshop, it opens up into Camera Raw. If you open up a JPEG, TIFF, PSD, or any other file type, it will just open up directly into Photoshop. So what I'm going to show you in Camera Raw is only applicable if you're opening up a RAW file. Now. Similar to what I've talked about in that first video, how to use Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin, there's specific things you should do to the RAW file that you won't be able to do to, let's say, a TIFF, PSD, JPEG, or any other file type. One of those things is choosing a camera matching profile. So if you plan to use a camera matching profile, you have to do it right now. Because once we bring this into Photoshop, and then if we try to use camera raw as a um, filter in, on the uh, layer in Photoshop, we will not be able to choose a camera raw profile. So do that. Just go to the profile browser and then go down to camera matching. So if you're going to choose one, choose one now. I'm not going to, but that's one thing you have to do. The other thing I suggest you do is if you need a white balance adjustment, do it now because the white balance adjustment is much more effective on a raw file than it is on any other file type. And if you do open this up into Photoshop or when you open it up into Photoshop, if you try to use uh, Camera Raw as a filter, um, you will not have the fine adjustment ability that you have here on the raw file directly. So do that also. The other thing you wanna make sure is that you're not doing any basic adjustments at all. You definitely don't wanna add any texture, clarity, dehaze, or contrast, or do anything with tone in general because you tend to enhance the noise when you do that, and then it's more difficult for Denoise AI to remove the noise. So you want the image as flat as possible. So don't do any basic adjustments at all. You also want to jump down to optics. If you're using a DSLR that needs profile adjustments, make sure you check that to do the profile adjustments. If you're using a mirrorless camera, you probably won't have to do that. The other thing I suggest you do is take a peek at detail and make sure that sharpening, because often, Adobe adds some default sharpening to the raw file. Take that down to zero. Make sure noise reduction, luminance noise reduction, that's this middle one, middle slider. Make sure that's all the way to zero. And color noise reduction, I mentioned in Lightroom that Lightroom's color noise reduction is excellent. And I leave that as a default, the default setting at 25. Adobe Camera Raw uses the same develop engine as Lightroom, the exact same algorithms. Everything's identical. So it has the same color noise reduction technology in here. So I'm going to leave that at 25. Now, if your detail panel may look a little different, that's because these little sliders are rolled open or these little triangles, I should say, not slide. So do that, sharpening all the way down, noise reduction all the way down, and then it's optional whether or not you want color noise reduction down. I'm going to leave it at 25. Now I'm done. So I'm done in camera. Raw. I'm just going to click open down here in the lower right hand corner and open it up into Photoshop. Now, it's best if you use Denoise AI as early in your workflow as possible because, as I mentioned with the image when it was in camera off, you start adding contrast to it and texture and clarity and sharpness and things like that. That will enhance the noise, and it's more difficult to remove the noise. So I'm ready to send this image into Denoise AI right now. What you need to do first, though, what I recommend you do first, is duplicate the background layer. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. Now, at this point, I could send this layer into Denoise AI, but the problem with that is, once I'm done in Denoise AI and return to Photoshop, 
the, the noise AI adjustments get baked in and I won't be able to go in and readjust anything. I might have missed something or I might feel that I need to tweak it a little bit. I won't be able to do that if I send it at this point. So what you want to do is you want to make this top layer, layer one, a smart object. When you make it a smart object, you'll be able to use smart filters on it. And all a smart filter is compared to a regular filter is with a smart filter, you could go back in and readjust it. That's all. So what we're going to do in the easiest way to do this is go up to filter and then down to convert for smart filters. Click on that and you'll see that you got this kind of little square in the corner here. That means this is now a smart object and I'm able to use smart filters on it. Now to get it into Denoise AI, go up to filter and then down to Topaz Labs and then over to Topaz Denoise AI, just like that. And it will open up the image into Denoise AI. Now, what I do in Denoise AI in this video is very similar to what I did in Denoise AI in the first video when I was using it as a Lightroom plugin. In that, I prefer to start out in what's called comparison view. Um, so at the top, you have views, you have single view, you have split view, you have side by side view, and then you have comparison view. With comparison view, I could view for the five AI models at one time. Now this may vary of where yours are, but right now in the top left hand corner, I have the standard AI model and you can see that model preferences is on auto. I like to start on auto for all of them. So I'm comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. To the right of that, at the top, we have the clear AI model. In the lower left, we have the low light AI model that is not on auto. So I'm going to put that on auto and you have to wait for it to re-render. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll go to the severe noise AI model. And that's not on auto either. Put that on auto, let it render. Now I kind of compare them and just eyeballing them, uh, looks like the clear model is the best of the four. Now there is a fifth one, the raw model. Now you may think, cause I opened a raw file up into Photoshop that we're actually looking at a raw file right now. But the thing is with Photoshop, when you open up a raw file into it, it opens up into Camera Raw first. Do your stuff there. Then when you open it up into Photoshop directly, even though the little tab at the top of Photoshop says it's, dot, in my case, a .NEF file, technically, it's not. It's not a .NEF file. It's a .PSD file or a .TIFF file, something like that. So, technically, the raw profile, or a, I'm sorry, the raw AI model won't be as effective at this point. But what I do, would do is I choose the worst of the bunch. It looks like severe noise might be the worst. Close though. So we'll choose that. I'll swap that out with this and see what that looks like. And actually that looks pretty good. But just eyeballing them, it looks like the clear model could be the best. Just the sharp, it has more sharpness. It got rid of all the noise as well. Looks pretty good. So we'll, let's just go with that. What I would typically do is though, once I pick uh, the best of the four I'm looking at, I would go to single view mode and then I would tweak it from this point forward. Move this navigation window around, let it render, it takes a second to render, see it's updating in the lower left hand corner. And then I would come in and try to tweak it. Now in the case of the clear model, we really only have these buttons so we could go to high. Try that, see what that looks like. Let it update takes a second. That looks pretty good. So let's just go with that and click apply. Now you'll notice once it does um, the noise reduction to this layer, when we open back up into Photoshop, that because this layer is a smart object, it looks a little different now. First of all, we have a mask. So if we were compelled to only apply the noise reduction to a specific part of the image, I could click on the mask get a brush, hit the B key, paint in black. So over here where the swatches are, hit the X key to make sure that the black swatch is the front swatch. And then I could paint in black on the mask and it will remove the noise reduction from that area. Now I don't need to do that, uh, but that's one attribute of a smart layer or smart object. You get this mask. Below that you see it says Topaz to Noise AI. If I want to readjust anything, I feel like, oh, maybe I should have chose the standard model, let's say. I could double click on that, that right there, Topaz to Noise AI, 
It will reopen the image up into Denoise AI and it will be right where I left off. So I could go back in and change something, readjust something. Now, again, I'm not going to do anything here. I'm going to click cancel. Close. All right. So we have our adjustment here. So now I'm ready to um, do my normal processing. What I'm going to do first is crop it. And there's something unique that happens here when you crop a smart layer that used Topaz Denoise AI on that smart layer. Um, we're going to go with the original ratio. I'm going to go in the top right-hand corner. I'm just going to make it a little tighter. All right. So now we're going to click the check bar. And then what you'll see will happen is it will go back into Topaz Denoise AI briefly, but then automatically just once it updates, it will pop back in to Sharpen AI. Um, or I'm sorry, pop back into Photoshop. You didn't do anything. It just did that all on its own. What it's doing, it's kind of realigning itself to the new crop. And then if you do double click on Denoise AI to go and readjust anything, it will reflect that crop when you're back there. If it didn't do this and you double clicked and went back into Denoise AI, it wouldn't show that crop. Now, the other thing I want to do is those camera raw adjustments that I didn't do at the top. I want to do those now. I'm still going to do them to the same smart object layer here because then I'll be able to go back in and readjust those. So we're going to go up to filter and then down to camera raw filter. Now I'm just going to do the normal adjustments that I typically would do on an image. Now this is the noise reduced image. I'll show you the noise reduction. I probably should have shown it earlier. But this again has the same processing engine as Lightroom. So it works pretty much identical to Lightroom. Too sharp. I'm overdoing it a touch. I will go to detail and we'll add some sharpening. Not that much sharpening. Don't have to add any noise reduction because we're done. Let's go to effects. And we'll add a darker vignette. You could roll this open, get all those all other sliders that are in Lightroom. Like that, we'll click OK. Let's just call that a day. And there is our finished image. Now, if I think I did something wrong in Camera Raw, I could just double click where it says Camera Raw Filter. Right here, it'll bring us back into Camera Raw. And because that's a smart layer, um, now it's going to bring us into Topaz Labs to Noise AI first. It has to kind of realign itself here to make sure this reflects the adjustments I just did. But then it comes back here. Now we're into Camera Raw. See, it left off. it's right where I left off. And like if I go to Basic, and let's say I want to bring Exposure. And then we'll click OK. There we go. So there is our adjusted image. There's our original RAW file. And the original RAW file really didn't show it. It had a considerable amount of noise. And here is our totally edited image. Now, when you're in Photoshop, you should save it two different ways. First of all, you should. my suggestion is you save it as a PSD file first. That will preserve everything over here. So if you know a week from now you come in and open this up, you could come back in and readjust your camera raw filter or readjust Denoise AI if you feel it needs it. To do that, go up to File and then go down to Save As. And then it's going to default. It should default to PSD. You could go to this drop down and you could see your choices there. So you want that Photoshop file. I'll save it to that same folder that the original image is in. And we're just going to do that. Now, you'll see in the lower left hand corner, it's saving it. It does take a while to save a PSD file. PSD files are rather large. So be aware of that. Now, you should export it. And if you're going to share it, you're probably going to want to export it as a JPEG. So to do that, we're going to go to File, and then we're going to go down to Export, and then down to Export As. And then I mentioned JPEG. We could do that at this drop down. You have the choice PNG, JPEG, or GIF, or GIF if you prefer. Uh, you could change the image, image size. Let's go with the full image size. And quality at six is good. It's showing you on the left that a full resolution. Uh, image with a quality of six, uh, six will give us a 4.4 megabit file. You can see if I bring that up to seven, it will go to 11.6. That's how you could control size along with 
your image size itself. So metadata, copyright and contact info will include uh, convert to sRGB that will look the same then on most monitors. Embed color profile, yep. Just click export and we'll save this to that same folder right here. And we're done. Um, what we could do now is quit this. Now it's asking me to save it. This does this when you export it uh, because it just remembers that it exported it. It's nothing special uh, because it it just will remember your export settings. So if I had changed the the size of the image um, and I don't save it, if I reopened up the PSD file and then go to export again and I didn't save it after changing the size of the export, it won't show that new size I put in, that's all. So it's really not that important. So we'll close that down and we'll go up to our images and here's our JPEG image right here. Our exported JPEG, you can see it looks pretty good. And here's our PSD image. I don't think that will render. Yeah, there's our PSD. Now I'll open that PSD back up into Photoshop. And as I mentioned, the reason why you want to save it as a PSD is because once it opens, you'll see that our smart layer is still here and we could go back in and I could readjust anything I want. So if I double click on camera raw filter, it will go to the to denoise AI first, kind of realigns itself. Then it will open up into camera raw, but then you'll see that it will leave me right where I left off. Remember I brought exposure up. You'll see in a second. And there it is. See, I brought exposure up, half a stop, and there it is. Just like that. So that's how I suggest you use Denoise AI as a Photoshop plugin. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.